Welcome to the conference uh, BioDanube, great opportunity for the organic agriculture in East Europe, and uh, also Goethe project, but Goethe project is in the end. Uh, I want to say welcome, very world welcome for our special guest and for you, for manage you manage your time for to be here for this uh, very import, important event for the organic agriculture in the world, but special in the Danube region. Um, will be, I want to uh, promote this project like a model for the uh, rural, sustainable, dura durable uh, rural development. I want to present Mr. President Andre Loe, but in Romania is Andre Leu. It's a Romanian name. <laughs> it's a Romanian friend. Thank you very much for your coming. Pleasure. I want to present uh, Mr. Daniel Botanoi, State Secretary of uh, Ministry of Agriculture of Romania. He represents Mr. Daniel Constantin, our ministry. He don't come in the last time, he don't come to, to be present here, but Mr. Uh, Daniel Botanoi represents him. <coughs> And I, um, we are honored to be here. This is uh, Daciana Serbu, is Euro Parliamentary, member of Commission of uh, Agriculture and Environment in the European Parliament, and also member of honor of BioRomania, is one of the strong supporters of uh, our association. And we have also Mr. Uh, Dominique Marion, is a other friend of. Uh, Bio Romania, we have a partnership with FNAP, is uh, Secretary General of uh, Federation Agricole de Agriculture Biologique de, de France, and also the très jeune uh, member of board of IFOAMEU. Congratulations. Uh, and we have uh, Mrs. Pinke, is uh, um, uh, director of EcoConnect. EcoConnect is also one of the first partners with Bio Romania is very involved in organic agriculture in East Europe. We start together with EcoConnect Romanian Organic Forum in uh, Romania in 2009. Thank you very much for, uh, for coming. For and also Mr. Bogdan Frățilă is uh, the representative of uh, branch Rodel uh, company. It's huge uh, company in um, business, lawyer, taxes, etc. But for us is our partner to um, uh, take in Romania the um, investors in organic agriculture and thank you very much is our uh, give the consulting for our association for the, the law etc. Thank you very much for everybody and I want to show 
uh, and uh, tell you now one of the big <coughs> uh, secrets of biodomania. Uh, we are um, like uh, we are built like association in 2008 in the um, uh, metropolis of uh, Transylvania. Is our member fundator, and we work together with the church. A big part of our member is belief. It's the believer in uh, in God. We believe the organic agriculture is the uh, divine sense of agriculture. Is the way uh, for make the agriculture in according with the the God, the Creator, the, the nature, and the uh, human body. And we have the a lot of member is the the monastery, the um, church with the, his land is certified. We make different products. You can uh, show this in our uh, booths here in uh, Hall 4. And because the Danube strategy put together also the cultural uh, heritage, we want to show a very short uh, Christian Orthodox prayer. Please, Father. Tatăl nostru care ești în cer, sfințească-se în numele Tău, fie împărăția Ta, facă-se voia Ta, precum în cer, așa și pe cuvânt. Pâinea noastră cea de toate zilele, dă-ne-o nouă astăzi și iată nouă greșelile noastre, precum și noi dăm greșiților noștri. Și nu ne duce pe noi în ispită, ci ne iubește în cinci. Vine-se cu adevărat să te ferici pe tine, născătoare de Dumnezeu. Și-a bururea fericită și prea nevinovată și Maica Dumnezeului nostru. Ceea ce e mai cinstită decât Herul Divii și mai rărită fără de asemănare decât Seia Divii. Daniel Botanoiu, State Secretary of Ministry of Agriculture. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I have the honor uh, to represent the Agriculture Ministry at uh, this conference, and uh, we would like to thank you uh, for uh, Mrs. Uh, Sirbu, because uh, Daciana Sirbu, because is the uh, the person, uh, the label for the organic uh, agriculture in Romania. And uh, also for Mr. President Julio, for Dominique, for uh, Inca, uh, Inca uh, Mr. President uh, Ciocianu, because uh, it's a very good conference, and uh, also for you, because you are uh, here uh, between, uh, between us. Uh, Biohawk uh, brings uh, together uh, the most active companies uh, in the organic farming. Uh, field uh, that they offer in uh, European uh, European market shapes the demand for uh, such products and educate uh, the consumers uh, toward in the higher uh, living. We are now Romania was uh, the country of the year and Biofac in uh, uh, last uh, uh, last years and uh, had a great opportunity to show. Europe, uh, it's great organic farming uh, potential and uh, show the great number of visitors our amazing products. The bio sector is very important in, uh, in uh, uh, Romanian agriculture. Development strategy and uh, the agriculture ministry establish partnerships and uh, strong liaison with uh, European country.
life cycle of uh, eco uh, uh, systems, helping improve our uh, biodiversity using the limited uh, resources in a sustainable uh, manner and uh, respecting the high test standard of animal wafers. Organic products are not considering any more a luxury. Uh, only very few can afford the demand for such products has been increasing constantly despite the economic crisis. Uh, this growing demand is uh, challenging the sector to develop rapidly, uh, to find uh, new ways and achieving in the competitivity level or productivity to adapt to rules for production, control and marketing. Romania has amazing uh, terroir and human potential for uh, organic farming. Our land is less polluted than uh, is many other uh, uh, European country and uh, our environment is uh, still among the best preserved. Uh, we offer a viable solution for these uh, who are willing to take and the challenge of progress. Uh, sure, uh, uh, in the present, the organic farming in uh, Romania and also the surfaces is uh, double and uh, compared in the 207. And the uh, Romanian market uh, for organic products is uh, developing uh, at a quick uh, pace. Uh, the demand for certif certified organic products is uh, increasing constantly and the distribution network is expanding. We are now how these products are available at uh, retailers such as Metro, uh, Carrefour, Mega Image, uh, Ocean, uh, uh, Diary, and uh, also eggs are the best sold organic products in, this, uh, in these stores. Uh, 17, 18 percent of Romanian organic products is being exported and uh, the import has been increasing yearly for uh, retailers need to meet the growing demand. The value of the import is uh, no close um, 100,000 million euros. Uh, in view of the dynamic of organic farming sector, the development strategy in the main scope of the Agriculture Ministry in Rural Development will uh, manage to find the feasible and the relevant solution with a uh, view the supporting operator in this, uh, this uh, sector. For uh, the, the U.S. strategy, the Danube region, more and more the consumer uh, are aware of the fact among with uh, this quality and the value of the products in environmental health, organic agriculture has a major, major contribution to achievement uh, of uh, sustainable de uh, development. However, is need the necessary action uh, made to the create a balance between measure of uh, economic development and the measure taken to the protect the environmental and uh, the strategy of the European Union for the Danube region represent an opportunity in this purpose in uh, Central and also Eastern Europe, the organic farming being a part, uh, second pillar of the strategy. The uh, Ministry of Agriculture from Romania support the economic development for the region and uh, in this scope in the last two years has taken place in the Danube Delta high level uh, meeting between your commissioner for agriculture, the environment, and the uh, fisheries, and uh, the Romanian authorities uh, to find a strateg strategic uh, solution to make the, uh, this uh, respecting the condition uh, for sustainability and uh, also the uh, unique ecosystem of the region. The complexity of the Danube territory determined by the present of the biodiversity uh, is the main reason for uh, submission effort in the order to develop the organic uh, sector in the Danube area. Uh, to implement the strategy is necessary to coordinate in the action and uh, integrate project by involving the leading actor we, who benefit uh, the knowledge and uh, the field or organic agriculture, the academia, the research institute, and uh, also including the operator from the organic fair, uh, farming area. Biodanube's uh, project represents the possibility to create a regional brand and for organic agriculture, which will uh, allow the development for image of Romania uh, by exchanging and uh, 
optimizing the activity of uh, production for organic products or uh, on the uh, foreign market. Uh, for uh, fulfilling the objective of the strategy, it is necessary to include uh, in the operational programs and also the allocation of funds from national and regional budgets, uh, as well as uh, attracting private uh, fund and uh, greater involve, involvement or financial institution. And uh, for the finish, uh, thank you very much for your attention and uh, thank you very much uh, for the invitation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. The State Secretary. And I want to give the word now to our friend, Mr. President uh, Andre Leu. And uh, you have a PowerPoint presentation. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Firstly, I just want to. No, I, I can just. Okay. Can you hear me here? That's okay. Um, okay, look, firstly, I'd just like to thank. Um, Dimitri Botanyu, the State Secretary, and also uh, the Sonia Sabu, the member of the European Parliament, particularly to Abraham. Um, we've been talking over several years now, and so it's a, a pleasure for me to be here and to my fellow speakers. And also to thank you for coming. Look, I really like the idea that Romania is taking this regional leadership for the Danube. And I think this is a brilliant idea. The area now of Central Europe and Eastern Europe is the fastest growing area for organic in the world. So the timing is beautiful. I just, and I want to say too, right in the beginning, you can be assured that iPhone will be your partner in this. We, what you're doing is great and, and we will help you wherever we can. Just a little bit about us. We are the global umbrella body for the organic movement and our goal is the adoption of ecologically, socially and economically bound system, uh, based systems that are based on our four principles of organic agriculture. And a lot of people think organic is a little niche. We are actually one of the biggest NGOs in the world. We have around at the moment about 750 member organisations that are really pleased with Romania in around 120 countries. And we represent, as of 2012, 1.9 million certified organic farmers. But actually most organic farmers are not certified. We represent a much higher level of farmers. The other thing I'd, I'd like to talk about is organic agriculture. A lot of people say, oh, if you go organic, it's... Um, you know, it's farming like we did in the past. The modern organic agriculture is an ecologically based system. We don't throw away tradition. We believe very much in traditional systems, but we combine it with innovation and science. It's a new agriculture. And very much we base it on four principles, health, ecology, fairness and care. And I'd ask you to go on our website and read it so you can understand what we mean by organic agriculture. To talk about the benefits in the Danube, and there are many co-benefits of organic agriculture, so I want to go through some of them. Uh, a very important one is that we can generate most of the soil fertility on farm or from locally supplied inputs. And that means we can significantly reduce the cost of production if we do it properly. We don't have to by spend money on expensive synthetic chemical fertilizers and synthetic pesticides. And for most countries that has to be imported. The other thing I want to talk about now, because I'm when we talk about the modern organic agriculture now, it is starting to become one of the highest yielding forms of agriculture. Plus you have the access to high value markets. So you know, it, it's a good economic model in terms of the amount of food we can produce, we can get better prices, and we can have lower input costs. The rate of growth. You know, we released our figures. At the moment, we are $63.8 billion globally. I know I should put it in, in, in uh, euros, but dollars always look bigger. <laughs> so, 
Um, but you can see, you know, from 1999 to now, just a little bit over 10 years, we've gone from 15 billion to almost 64 billion US. That's just the certified market. There are heaps of other markets. I, I can see people here, our friends from FNAB, who are probably not even included in this, and we're talking about thousands of farmers. Um, so the real value is a lot higher. But for the Danube region, for your grains, your wine, your dairy products, fruits, you have a very good high value market on your doorstep as well as for your local markets. You have to do both. What I, the other one I want to talk about because it's not just about yield and markets, it's also about our future in terms of where we're going at the moment with food security and climate change. This is a critical issue that's affecting the world. We are going into, whether we like it or not, into extreme climate change. All of our countries now, we suffer droughts, increased frequency of droughts, increased frequency of heavy rain. These extreme events are coming more often. And we look at the world at the moment, we've got London, almost, you know, the UK almost underwater. We've got the USA, you know, freezing. We've got my country with both floods and droughts and bushfires. You know, everywhere we look, we can see these increases in extreme weather events, and this affects farming. So, looking at how we supply the world with food is a critical issue, and we actually have very good data on it. Firstly, I just want to talk about the term organic, that's the English word for this farming system. We have bio, biologic, there, uh, you know, uh, there are many, many words for this paradigm, so we don't need to get stuck on just one word. But in terms of where it came in the English language, it came from recycling organic matter, building up soil organic matter, and that brings many multiple benefits. And particularly when you look at climate change, here's some of the peer-reviewed literature showing how organic systems are more resilient in these extreme weather events. And I want to give you examples. This is in Switzerland, the feeble dock trials. It's one of the, the, the long-term um, trials that's going for, this is getting close to 30 years now, and it's a scientific trial looking at the difference between organic, biodynamic, and conventional systems. This is about year 16. And there's two, one system is conventional, one is organic. It's the same soil. In the organic system, we've been incrementally improving the soil by increasing the organic matter levels. And you look at an extreme rain event at planting, which as a farm, it's all our nightmares. The organic soil has kept its integrity. That crop will recover. The conventional will have to be replanted if they need to get a crop. Plus, they've lost so much of their topsoil, it's, it's washed away. And this, I want to explain why and the science behind it. This is actually pictures I got from the Rodale Institute in the USA. And you can see the same soil again. The difference is organic matter. The organic soil, it's in the jar of water, it keeps its integrity because of the humus holding it together. The soil with the lower level of organic matter now disperses, it erodes. It can't keep its stability. The, and to explain this in even greater detail, this is humus, which is one of the very important, there's a lot of different sections of organic matter, or fractions as we call them. Humus is a very important one, and when we look at it under an electron microscope, we can see it looks like a sponge. That's why it can hold up to 30 times its own weight in water. It's actually a polymer, like a glue, and it keeps the soil stable. So when you saw that soil in the jar of water, why it kept its integrity is because this glues it together. It stops it from eroding. <coughs> and it also stores most of the nutrients in the soil, and we know that you know, studying old growth forests, the average age of humus is around 2,000 years. It can be very stable if we look after it. With some farming systems, we can destroy it in a few years. But with the right systems, we can build it up. 
So what I want to show here, and this is work which is done by one of our master students, so you can conceptualise what it means by building up soil organic matter in terms of capturing rainfall and storing it on farm. A lot of the farms that I see around the world are between 5 and 1%. Europe actually is a better than a lot of um, continents because a lot of your soils are fairly recent due to the glaciation periods. But in Africa and Asia, in my own country, we have very low levels of organic matter. And as a result, when it rains, you can get about, you know, in the root zone, the 30 centimetres, you can store 80 to 160,000 litres. Get these soils back to the levels that they were, 5 6%. And I can tell you it can be done. I did it in my own farm. I started at less than 1% and 11 years later I reached a new e equilibrium at 6%. So I went from being able to store 80,000 litres to being able to store close to a megalitre at my root zone. If you want to think about that, that 98% of the world's agriculture is rain fed. We cannot afford to irrigate it all. And if we did, it would be one of the world's worst environmental disasters because we'd dam every, every watercourse, we'd drain every aquifer, we'd build millions of kilometres of canals. What we need to do is increase the efficiency of rain-fed systems. Building up organic matter is the most effective way because instead of building megalitre dams, we can store a megalitre just where we need it, at the root zone of our crops. You know, it's the most logical, simple low-cost solution. So this is very important information for our future and particularly going into what we're seeing now with these, you know, we're seeing our rain events coming heavy and sharp and extreme. To be able to capture that and keep it on farm, the best way is with organic matter and store it for when you go into drought. And this is another scientific field trial. There's another one that's, at the moment it's close to 30 years old, like the feeble one. This is actually about year 16 again and they went into drought. The difference, the same soil, one treatment is conventional, the other one is organic. Each year we've just in incrementally built up the soil organic matter with good organic practice. We go into drought. The organic corn doesn't know there's a drought because it's got all the water where it wants it at the root zone, the conventional is struggling. You don't need to be a rocket scientist to work out which one of these two crops is going to give you the better yield. This is peer-reviewed science. Uh, the, the project was independently peer-reviewed by Dr. Well, actually Professor David Pimentel from Cornell University in New York State. And these are the figures. that. Um, they got between 28 to 34 percent higher yields in organic systems in the drought years than the conventional. So for us, this is very important news for our future in farming. The other thing I want to talk about is, the, once again, the, the mythology of if we're going to go organic, you know, it's like going backwards in time, we're all going to starve, you know. I hear things when I go to international meetings, you know, the problem with Africa is because it is organic. What I want to talk about is what we call good organic practice. I'm not, not talking about best, but good organic practices and what it can do when we work with traditional farming systems. And this is particularly applicable to the countries in the Danube region, like Romania, like Bulgaria, like Moldova. You're still largely traditional systems, and that's a benefit. But if we can put good organic practices on it, we've found that we can actually get significant increases in yield. Now this is data from Africa, so, but it is applicable for much of the world where you know, we work with traditional farmers and show them how to bring these good practices in. In Africa where we've done it, and this is reviewed by two United Nations organisations, the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, UNTAG, and the United Nations Environmental Program. And they looked at 114 projects in sub-Saharan Africa covering 2 million hectares, 1.9 million farmers. So this is a substantial review. And where we have taught these farmers good organic practices, on average we had a 116% increase in yield 
in East Africa, and this is where iPhone has been the most active, we had 128% increase in yields. As a result, the um, Secretary General of UNTAG and Arkham Steiner, the Executive Director of UNEP, basically said the evidence presented is that organic agriculture is more conducive to food security. As a result of that, now the African Union has uh, ecological organic agriculture as a core part of achieving food security. And I want to give you an, it's an extreme example, but I think it's a very good example. If you remember in the 1970s and 80s in Ethiopia, in Tigray province, and they'd have these droughts and these famines where thousands of people would die. Now one of our members, the Institute of Sustainable Development, started working with the farmers and working at an ecological landscape level, not just on one farm. We work in communities because farmers come in communities and work on the landscape, including the farm in it. The first thing they did is rehabilitate the degraded landscapes, bring back the natural ecology, replant it. They started rehabilitating um, gullies, getting the farmers to plant legumes as part of their crops. In this case, you know, things like fava beans, mung beans, legumes that will give nitrogen but also give high protein food for the people and start also revegetating the fields with legume trees and long grasses, building windbreaks and places for bringing in more what we call functional biodiversity. Then they'd sustainably harvest this and use it for making compost and biogas. And I think what is, I want to talk a little bit about the advantage of using this biomass for biogas because it gave the farmers energy independence. You know, farming, we need to think about everything, you know, um, where we can actually make our own energy. And with biogas, they can do their cooking, run their lights, you can run electrical generators, you can run vehicles from it. And they can also, if you want, now we can get carbon credits as a way of um, getting an extra income to pay for it. But um, I think the most important thing that came out of this as well is that the residue from the biogas, that is compost, when it was put on the fields, they ended up with more than a 100% increase in yield. So this is a classic win-win. We actually get free energy and we get increased production. So these are some of the results. I'll, I'll just talk to this one because I think this is a very good result. It's been published by the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization. If you have a look at it, they used over 900 samples over seven years, so you get a high level of confidence in this data. The lowest bar is the traditional. The green bar is where they put in the compost. In this one, they didn't force people to be organic. If people wanted to use chemical fertilizers, they could, but they actually, the people who use compost actually got higher yields than the people who use chemical fertilizers. Most farmers aren't stupid. You have to pay a lot of money for chemical fertilizers. The compost is free. It's an opportunity cost. The business model is you get a higher yield and, you, and you're not going into debt to buy chemical fertilizers. So naturally, everybody goes to compost. The other thing that they notice too, and this is getting back to this concept of resilience. I talked about um, water as one example. The other one is disease and pest pressure. And here's one of the things I found, and this is around the world, you know, when you grow wheat, if we get the wet seasons, we get rust. And they noticed that the wheat grown with compost didn't get it. Here's a really good picture. It's the same soil, it's the same climate, there's nothing separating the two fields. One's treated with compost, one is treated with chemical fertilizers. The wheat field, you know, with compost <coughs> did not get the rust. What they found is that they had to spray the chemical fields with um, toxic fungicides to get any yield. They got 1.6 tons a hectare. They got 6.5 tons a hectare from the compost. And this, I think, is really important to, to look at how we can build resilience from local inputs without having to be dependent on these external toxic inputs. 
The other one I want to talk about too, getting back to how we redefine organic agriculture. Instead of thinking about, oh, we'll substitute uh, toxic synthetic chemical with an organic input, is using what we call functional biodiversity. Using the ecology to give us these ecosystem services rather than toxic chemicals. And this is a really wonderful example of maize in, um, in Africa, what they did. Maize, everywhere where we grow it, is affected by the corn borer. In the past, the idea was to um, spray it with toxic insecticides. Now they've decided to make them in, you know, make them into genetically modify them instead of having to spray them with toxic pesticide they produce their own toxic pesticide they kill the insect that eats it and supposedly they don't kill us for eating the same toxic pesticide it does not make sense to me but that's what's happening around the pressure in this case they got a lot of different scientists ecologists botanists entomologists together and looked at how we can use functional biodiversity instead of synthetic inputs. They planted a legume called Desmodium. And what Desmodium does, it puts out these phenolic compounds that repels the moth. On the outside, if you look on the outside, there's a, another host plant that the moth likes, but it's a false host. The moth goes instead, it doesn't like the corn because it's being repelled, it finds this new host, it lays its eggs on there, and when they hatch and the caterpillars emerge, the napier grass has these fine silica hair, hairs. It impales them, kills them, and breaks the whole life cycle of them. The other thing that it does, it also puts out these compounds that cause the suicidal germination of weed seeds. And this is a new area we're looking at called selective allelopathy, where we can put plants with our crop that won't actually benefit our crop, but will suppress pests and diseases and, and weeds. And Desmodium will do that, particularly with the worst weed in Africa, which is called Striga. So this is one of the field trials. That lovely blue purple flower is Striga, and it's a parasitic weed. So you can see the traditional system when it gets attacked by the parasitic weed and the corn borer, and what happens right next door to it, you have the Desmodium. There's no Everything is the same, same soil, same climate, same water, <coughs> bringing in the functional biodiversity. We don't have to be a rocket scientist to work out which one of these two is going to give us more yield. So instead of gen genetic modification and heaps of chemicals, we can use functional biodiversity to get huge increases. This is the future. When I say organic combines tradition with innovation and science, this is the future for us. These sorts of models. This is the farmer. This is a farmer. These people, he, he has less than 0.5 of a hectare of land. He, used to, he and his family, for three months of the year, used to go hungry. Now they have a food surplus. They can also, they innovated, and they, it's a napier grass there, they progressively feed it to a cow so they have milk every day and the surplus milk they feed, you know, they sell it as a cash income. They've now built nice houses, they can send their children to school, they can pay for medical bills. It's changed their life. And the talk about eco-function intensification or functional biodiversity, you look at the desmodium, it suppresses weeds. We don't need nitrogen fertilizer. It, it does it there. It conserves the soil, it repels pests and provides high protein um, stock feed. So we get multiple co-benefits by going down this pathway. The other way we have to spend a lot of money on buying poisons and, and spend a lot of money on buying synthetic nitrogen fertilizers that we don't need. When the atmosphere is 78% nitrogen and we have plants that can fix it for free for us, why are we wasting money buying it? I want to talk about some of the other ways we're going at the moment, because the big push now is for Roundup Ready GMOs no-till. And everybody's saying, oh, organic, because we use tillage, you know, we're, we, we, we aren't as good as um, Roundup Ready you know, no-tills. This is some of the, the work done on some of the, 
the uh, low-till and no-till systems that we're doing. I won't go into great detail here um, to explain it. Uh, this is a very good example that would work very well in the Danube region where you plant hairy vetch um, and it's a cool growing legume. When it starts to flower uh, about plant, normal planting time in the spring, you roll it and it will die off. And in it, you plant the corn. By the time the corn comes up, you have this lovely mulch that suppresses all the weeds. You've got all the nitrogen for free for the corn crop. As the corn grows up, or the maize grows up, it shades out any weeds. And the results, this is in the United States of America, where conventional agriculture is regarded as one of the highest yielding agricultures. It's a benchmark everybody wants to reach. This organic trial got 160 bushels an acre. That's what the US um, uses as their measurement. Compared to conventional agriculture, the, the county average is 130 bushels. So it shows now that as we're getting good ecological science underpinning organic systems, we can start to get higher yields than, than best practice conventional. Here's some more studies, and I'm taking these from the United States. I can actually show you slides and slides of study now where we're starting to get higher yields as we're getting scientific research. But I just thought I'd show you two from the United States, um, Iowa State University and Washington State, where here you know, they're finding higher yields in organic. Um, and I think the other one I want to finish on, because farmers everywhere, we are actually the lowest socioeconomic group in the world. In all our countries, even in my country, which is supposedly a rich country, farmers are struggling with debt and leaving the land. And all of us, I know in Romania you're having the same problem, France, you know, anyone here, we doesn't matter how wealthy or how poor our countries are, we need to keep, if we want farmers on the land, if we want the next generation to farm, kids don't want to farm anymore. You know, in my country, there's a joke going around with all the farmers. It's a good joke because it's the year of family farming and it goes, what do you call it when you give the family farm to your children? The answer is child abuse. And it's funny because it's true, <laughs> unfortunately. We, we need to turn this around. So getting good incomes for farmers is important to keep farmers on the land and for their communities, for their villages and all the other service providers. It's one of the most important things we can do is make farmers viable, and we have very good information that that organic farming is viable. Uh, look, I think one of the best examples, if you look at Anton, Dominic, and myself, who've been farming since the 70s, and we're still farming, where so many other people haven't, we have robust, sustainable systems. We mightn't be wealthy, but we are, you know, we, we are farming and getting a lot of value out of it. So I'd just like to sum up very quickly. With the right systems, we can have lower inputs because we can generate most of it on farm and where we can't get it on farm, we can get that locally. So that, that lowers our costs. We can also add biogas in it to actually start getting energy independence. Instead of being dependent on greenhouse gas generating oil, we can do it the other way around. And as a result, I'd like to see where we can actually start giving our farmers carbon credits for what they're already doing by composting and biogas. We can now, as we're starting to get science, start to get some of the, the best yields in agriculture. That means there's no need for our countries. Most countries go into debt buying these chemical fertilizers and pesticides. We can reverse the terms of trade by not having to use our foreign exchange to buy something that's unnecessary. And we can ensure that farmers get much higher net returns, which is really important. We can use high value export markets to help the balance of trade. But also, I'd like to say from myself, we, can, we must develop our local markets as well. Think of this as a community. And so I'd like to end it with that and say, I think you're on the, the verge of a very exciting future with the Danube. And we really look forward to working with you. And, and I think. It's going to be great what we will achieve. So I'll leave it at that. 
because I know I think one of the things I do want to say if we can develop communities in agriculture agriculture is one of the most significant employers in the world something like 80% of the world is in agriculture I know in your region in the Danube it's still a largely a regional, re, regional area there's the farmers and all the other people that depend on it if we can make farming prosperous we can make the countries and the regions prosperous and that's what we need to do and think about. So I'll leave it at that and say thank you. And I really look forward to many more years of working together to do this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andre. Um, because uh, Miss uh, Daciana Serbu must give some interview to the press, I make a short, uh, small change in the program and I give the, the words, please. Hello. Um, thank you for inviting me here. Yes, the press needs to know we are here. And uh, it's the second year after Actually, last year, Romania was the country of the year, so now we cannot say anymore that we are in the beginning of uh, bio and organic agriculture in Romania. Uh, yesterday, I read an article in Le Monde that Romania is uh, the heaven of bio. <laughs> and uh, yes, I think so, uh, because uh, we have all the potential and uh, we, ho we have... Uh, a lot of uh, non, not actually um, clear land, and uh, um, we didn't use for many years pesticides. Uh, and this now it's an advantage for bio. Um, every year uh, we have more and more bio producers, so this is the a good news. Um, and uh, for this. We need support, and uh, I think the Romanian government uh, offered all the support they need, and uh, we are fighting now to reduce the, the taxes for the for the um, the VAT for um, the bio produce um, organic food, um, and uh, also we have European support. Uh, in the new CAP, you know we have 30% uh, for each country, or the money uh, for each country has to be uh, used for bio agriculture or environmental measures. Uh, and uh, also uh, we are fighting now for uh, introducing the um, um, bio agriculture in uh, the program to promote uh, in the European Union and outside the European Union uh, to promote the bioagriculture from European funds. Um, but uh, also we need the support of um, you, actually, because you are uh, older in this business. Um, we are now, we have now to 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 make uh, fast steps in order to be on the market to be able to present ourselves uh, um, professional and uh, our products to be uh, on top. Uh, this is actually what the farmers want and what the producers want because most of the um, public here uh, is made uh, from the producers and uh, the farmers. They need to be professional to sell their products on European market and not only in the European market and um, to have all of our support. Um, we were open to all their needs and uh, the suggestions but we need also to present ourselves here uh, to to say that we are now not we are now on the market and we are very good. Um, so um, I'm happy every year to come here. 
I will be very happy next year to, to have more uh, space and more producers, actually. And, uh, and to say that uh, f uh, we grow our uh, bioagriculture. And uh, also to explain you that um, on Romanian market, in the beginning, we had some problems because of the prices, because uh, almost all the products were imported, and we sell the um, raw materials and we import the final produce. So, th which is not good for us because it's more expensive, and we need to. Uh, to develop this area, so we did some. Uh, we made some steps, also in this, and uh, we finally convinced the big uh, retailers to sell Romanian organic products, which was uh, <laughs> a strong experience. <laughs> I have to confess, um, but this is the market, European market. <laughs> Uh, so um, now we have also good news on this area. So uh, as a conclusion, uh, we are now not in the beginning. We are, I'm convinced to say this, uh, uh, bio heaven and for European market. So uh, we need your support. We need our uh, producers, and uh, we need to go forward and uh, to meet each other next year in a in a better position and with more and more producers. So um, they have all my help, and uh, I'm here for your questions and uh, for the comments. Thank you again. We make also very small change. If somebody want to make a question to Ms. Daciana Serbu about the European Parliament or uh, common agriculture policy, because must uh, live. If not, I'll be also in the um, our exhibition area, so I'll be I'll be all the day there. So. Thank you very much for Thank your you. coming and for your support again. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Inka uh, have also a PowerPoint presentation. And it's uh, EcoConnect. It's an um, association very involved in East Europe. Uh, his vision will be important for the Danube strategy. Thank you very much, Marianne. Um, I'm Inka Zaxa from EcoConnect. I'm project manager there for international markets, for research and relations. And we feel very, very honored to be here. So thank you very much. And um, I have to agree with Andre and with the others. Congratulations for this project, for what you achieved, and for really making organic in, from Romania visible, like being country of the year last year, like doing a lot of um, PR, which is really important to make it visible, and uh, I think you're on a very good way there. Um, short to us, we are the International Center for Organic Agriculture of Central and Eastern Europe. We have, as Marianne already mentioned, also done a, a fair few conferences in Romania, a market report in Romania, also in 2010 and 2011, and uh, we generally really try to the people. So if you need know-how to um, for your processors, for your marketers, then EcoConnect can be of help. And uh, so it's just a few images of what we're doing with Central and Eastern European groups as networking opportunities to bring uh, Romanian products to the market to make them more visible. You already have so many opportunities in your own country where you invite. But additionally, um, I would suggest 
that you can, oh, sorry, uh, it's just another um, seminar with Bioterra in 2010 on direct marketing, um, market studies. You can, for example, uh, give information on your activities in our information letter, which will be sent to 10,000 contacts. We also translate it to Romanian, so we offer you there to talk about your project and uh, make it public, not only to the people who come to your events, but also to others. If you, uh, I know that uh, some are very interested in biodiversity. We also have activities on organic seed in Poznan this March. So you're also very warmly invited to join, to get involved, and to get information. And of course, to the Organic Marketing Forum in Warsaw in the beginning of June, which is the, the central conference, the international conference on organic agriculture in Central and Eastern Europe. So, so far, you've been doing so great with your own fairs. Also, come to this one because there will be people who then will additionally look at Romania as a very good partner. So, um, and you can get know how on. Uh, on production, on marketing and networking sessions. So um, to make it more concrete, to really uh, take, uh, th that the Romanian producers can meet potential customers here at Biofach, it's just some, some impressions of Organic Marketing Forum. So for Biofach, uh, we organize an organic networking session tomorrow where you can just please join for the sellers and buyers of organic products, it's like speed dating, but uh, it's to build your network, so you have uh, one minute to present what you want to sell or buy, and then the other person comes, and then you change seats. So it's really, as time is money and Biofach, it's very much fun, and it's also very fast to get to know many potential buyers. And so as an uh, up-to-date, fast support, we would like you to join with your project, with your ideas, and um, I just wanted to be quick, so thank you very much, and good luck with your project. Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, we go for that because the time is money also in our conference. Uh, and, uh, okay, now my friend uh, Dominique Marion. Bienvenue, Dominique to our conference. Uh, we, we are, um, let's say, partner friends, but we have something in common. We speak bad English, but very good uh, French and Romanian. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you, Marianne, and uh, thank you for the invitation, and thank you for all speakers. Uh, I'm former. I'm farmer in France, organic farmer, and I represent FNAB, a Federation of uh, Organic Farm Farmer. Uh, we have uh, more than 50% uh, of uh, organic French farmer, and uh, when uh, Marianne says uh, to us, uh, we need you to uh, to have a, a better organic farming in Romania, uh, my president, who is who is here. Uh, says, okay, uh, you have to go here, and uh, I go to Budapest uh, quickly, very quickly, quickly, to to meet uh, <laughs> to meet uh, some people and to to have a, a convention uh, with the beginning of a, a history. Uh, André Le always says uh, very well, what is organic farming? What is the benefit of organic farming? And uh, the way is here, the way is here in Romania, and all the country, and uh, in all the world. So uh, in Europe, we have a new cap, and this cap is an opportunity to change agriculture. It is not the better cap that we could have, but it is a cap, and so we have to uh, make ways and to use to change uh, the agriculture to make more organic farming, but also to change the practice of conventional agriculture. Uh, in Romania, your project is a good project, because it uh, takes the good way to have uh, less and less pesticides, 
and less less uh, products who can be not very good for the nature. Uh, all what is done to change agriculture to sustainable agriculture is a step very important. Uh, the Danube is a, a region who had uh, to be pro protected for the Romanians and all population who live there, but also for the global earth and for the f uh, future generations. Uh, organic farming could be a tool for economic export for the market, but it must be a very good chance to get a better way of life for small farmers, their family, and the community. That is very important. Organic farming is not only, it could be, it has to be, but also to be a change for the community. We thought with IFOAM that organic farming to, to get a good number of small farmers in their place and not to have to go to town and to have no 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 way of life no the way of life so um, I want to say to you and all people that FNAB is not uh, uh, FNAB is not a uh, super hero FNAB is a farmer organization and uh, the work we have to do together is we c can exchange with you to say our history, how we did our uh, organic farming network, how we have to uh, work with the ministry, with all partnership. And so uh, I am happy because uh, our, uh, our work is beginning this uh, month at the end of, of this month, because uh, a delegation of uh, Romania come with uh, uh, Mariam and with uh, uh, other people from Romania and also Bulgaria, because we have a very embassy, uh, a very efficacient embassy uh, in, uh, in, in Budapest. And so, uh, Bucharest, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> Danube, yes. Bucharest. <laughs> no, so uh, uh, this work c could um, could be the, the beginning, and uh, maybe we have with other partner to have a very future, good future for all from all farmers, big, small, and all farmers and all the family. And so uh, I'm happy to uh, to be here, and uh, uh, now. We have to work together to have a, a more and more organic farmer in Romania. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, and now uh, uh, a strong partner for us because uh, <clears throat> like organic farmer we are the, the small uh, we don't have the competence and we need the the, the strong partner for help us one of uh, the uh, partner is Rodel branch uh, Romania. of Romania of Rodel company and uh, Mr. Bogdan Frățile is uh, our partner uh, in Romania please Thank you, Mr. Ciociano. So, first of all, um, I would like just to say a, a brief, uh, a brief presentation to investing in, in Romanian agriculture. Romania being one of the main countries on the Danube, on the south part of the Danube. Uh, we, these is, are the points. Uh, briefly, we'll going through why we are here, who we are. We are uh, international. A consultancy firm act, uh, providing uh, legal tax management consulting services. Uh, why we are here? Because we are very active in Central and Eastern Europe. We have more than 30 offices uh, in, in Central and Eastern European countries. We are very active in agribusiness, not only in Romania, but also in, in Bulgaria, Hungary, and the other countries. Why we are here? Because uh, our headquarter is in Nuremberg just away 
kilometers away from here, so in a in a first one of the first green buildings here in Nuremberg. And uh, why we are here? Because we are starting. We have started a, a partnership with Bio Romania Association, and we are very active on our Romanian agri business. Just uh, to give you a, a very green map. Green is not only for this presentation. It is our is our logo. Is our is our company color also. So we have uh, over 3,500 consultants in 91 offices, more than 40 countries. You may see Europe is almost 100% uh, covered by by our offices. Let's uh, a few things about about our Romanian relevant expertise. So we started in 1998 in Romania. We have now three offices in Bucharest, Timisoara, and Cluj. Uh, from our track uh, in agribusiness, we have uh, assisted uh, project in acquisition at lease and farming of arable land of over 20,000 hectares. We have. Uh, uh, assisted the expansion of the largest food retailer from Germany to Romania. We have uh, assisted the acquisition of Romanian bio producer by, a, by an international group. Uh, also acquisition of local diary company. We advise Romanian producer exporting in EU countries like uh, Romanian uh, vineyards exporting to Germany or the, the way around uh, German exporters to Romania assessing. We would like to just point out the f some frame of, uh, of Romanian agriculture, not only focused on the, on the bio, but generally some main positive data, some market potential matters and the structure of Romanian farms. As you all experts very well know, Romania has a total arable area, very fifth largest in EU. Last year, from, from the official data, over 8.3 million were, were farmed. The wheat for fourth largest surface farm, corn has been the largest producer, and sunflower very high. We are not talking about bee, of course, unfortunately. So we are talking of, of general uh, or normal farm. Some we say non satisfactory aspects, but this giving also a potential to the market is uh, yeah, over 1 million hectares per year at least are not farmed. The average efficiency. Uh, is, is very low, uh, uh, still of the 1960s in the EU six states. So here is a lot of a lot of uh, work to do and uh, potential. Uh, production value is still very low. Farming costs, on the one hand, are are lower, but here the inputs in in organic uh, could be an advantage, being uh, lower inputs in in the producing costs. Equipment value, as you may see, comparing to EU 15 countries, is uh, yeah, 25 times lower on the average. So there's still a lot of a uh, lot of work to do, and financing, which is very important. Uh, yeah, per hectare, it's we are talking about bank finance is very low, 110 euro per hectare compared to over almost 2,000 euro in EU. This leads some to some disadvantages. Uh, yeah, causing the, the import, the high import of food in average, we, the data we have 40%. Um, structure of farms, also the, the local experts very well know, uh, is the, one of the most divided uh, agriculture structure in EU. Uh, the number of farms, however, are decreasing for four, from 4.4 million to 3.8 uh, million. We have some figures which are very detailed now. The fact is, uh, yeah, legal entities uh, uh, hold uh, the largest part, even if they are uh, over hec over one hectare, 0.3 of the number of farms, they are farming over almost 50% of the farm surfaces. So this is also uh, a place where, where it should be balanced in the, in the market. We have uh, some main uh, topics on the on the advantages in, in investing in Romanian agriculture. Uh, the, the main advantages were, some of them were already mentioned, the large surfaces of la arable land still available for investments, not only for foreign investors, but also by local, for local investors. The low, still low land prices compared to the EU. Climate and soil quality, well known already. Uh, the low labor costs still uh, they are increasing, but still still low compared to EU. 
yeah, one point which which I better expert uh, the law and uh, state of uh, rule of law. It's I would say it's in improving very much, uh, strengthening. Uh, I have been advising uh, foreign investor for over 15 years, and I can uh, attest that in the last uh, 10 years, the, the development, the, the rule of law has has uh, improved very much, and also the last governments uh, uh, are. Creating, trying to create, and starting with the EU accession, a, a more friendly legal frame for foreign investment or for local investment in agriculture. EU funding is still uh, is still uh, an asset for 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 the Romanian investment. Acquisition of arable land in Romania, you have maybe all read in the press. It's a long debate now on the uh, acquisition of land by foreigners in Romania. Uh, starting with uh, January 2012, they were conditioned the EU citizens by the residency Romanian. Now, from starting from 1st of January 2014, they basically may freely acquire land. Uh, however, there is a draft land law in in uh, in debate now, which should should come. It was already uh, in Parliament, but sent back by the by the uh, president, uh, which is trying to. To protect the local farmers and the the small uh, Romanian farms, but this will come maybe in the in the next weeks. We we hope to to get clarification here and and from from the from the parliament. Some uh, some key issues, some facts you may consider investing in Romania. There are still some some important points to be to be. Uh, Mitigated cadastral regime uh, restitution process pro procedures are still not finalized, but uh, part of them are 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 still uh, on the on the right track. Cadastral measurements is still uh, is still an open uh, issue, but investors or bigger farmers are working on it and also doing uh, cadastral maps and not only for their investment but also for some small uh, communities, some small villages, local uh, local investors or uh, investors uh, take over this and, and make their own documentation also for the communas. As I said, uh, to, to be observed the preemption rights now, uh, there exist only according to the civil law for land lessees. In the future draft also the co-owner, the neighboring owners, uh, the, smaller, uh, the smaller farmers and the Romanian state shall have a, a preemption right at the acquisition. Of course there are there are some legal restrictions to, to public ownership land, and and contracts are basically on on Romanian law, subject to notarization, registration with land book, and then with city hall. Some uh, some aspects on the farming on uh, farming uh, land contracts in Romania. There is no standard anymore, no standard farm lease contract. So the parties, lessor and lessee, are free to to agree on the conditions. Uh, they are registered with the, the, hit, the city hall and are uh, written of execution. They have a maximum period of 49 years. Specific terms have to be observed. As I said before, preemption right has to be observed in case of a sale. Subleasing is prohibited in, under the Romanian law. However, local farmers use the swap of land, which is not uh, publicly registered, which may cause some difficulties uh, between farmers if they swap or change the work they are farming. This has to be then, then reviewed. Farming land leases are sufficient and are uh, welcome for APIA, for the Romanian uh, body who is taking care of the farming subsidies. However, this has to be registered with the city hall before. There is a new, on the, on the bio uh, business, there, are, there is a new legal framework, some new orders uh, by the Ministry of Agriculture of last year uh, implemented with 1st of January. Uh, there are uh, some forms, some uh, registration formalities to be, to be done by the traders, by the producer, by the importers and exporters. We have also a small article in, in the Bio Romania magazine on this, you know, more detail. Uh, documents on, on a testing agreement with a certification body declaration. The deadline is uh, 16 May or December 15 for the operators who do not require financial support. Uh, also because land uh, and law uh, goes together with tax matters, we have some specific uh, tax experts for agribusiness and for land acquisition. Just highlight some, some points. Uh, 
So for small producer, there is the income tax of 16%, uh, but there are some tax exemption uh, thresholds, so some limits uh, is free of tax. They have to, to pay also contribution of 5.5%. Uh, also for leases, for revenues from leasing, uh, this uh, has to be the income tax of 16% has to be withholded by the lessee, by the tenant. But also on these uh, revenues for the small farmers, 5.5% uh, so social and health contribution have to be paid uh, now, which may increase a little bit uh, the land uh, lease uh, uh, fees for the next years. But we have talked before also a little bit on VAT for bio uh, products. Generally, uh, for uh, VAT, it is to observe that there is a reverse charge system for serious and technical plant, which was <coughs> prolonged until end of uh, 2018, and VAT of 9% was introduced uh, for for wheat, uh, wheat flour, breed, and and breeding products. There is an initiative to to have a, a smaller VAT also for for bio products. Specific tax on land on special land constructions, farming concern has been introduced last year. One, one uh, incentive is the dedu deduction of research and development expenses, <coughs> which can be used by the local farmers, which is an additional 50% deduction for eligible expenses in the field of research or development, for instance, for seedings, for, for new products. Um, in case of land acquisition, there are uh, some some taxes, income taxes to be observed uh, on on the based on the transaction prices. Profit tax for for companies is 16% as this flat tax, which is also now subject to some discussions. The VAT on land transfer, so there is there is uh, a VAT exemption for for agricultural land, so it's now subject to VAT. Uh, but legal entities may opt for taxation, which is 24% now. Um, there is an obligation for foreigners if they want to, to buy land to reg register in Romania. A very good incentive now for foreign investors is the holding structure uh, rule. So we have a tax exemption starting with 1st of January 2014 under two conditions that uh, a minimum shareholding of 10% and uh, shareholding period of one year. So these are free in case of holding structure in Romania. Of course, in case of a land acquisition, notary fees have to be observed, land book uh, costs, which are roughly 1.2 up to 2%. So these are just some highlights. Of course, for, for more details, we, we, can, uh, we can talk in detail. We have my contact details. We are very keen to support uh, the Romanian agriculture to bring not only uh, foreign capital or investors from Romania, but also to help uh, local uh, producers to export or to use the markets. We are uh, trying to work together with, with uh, Bio Romania to help also the bio producers in Romania. We have seen from uh, foreign investors, especially from Germany, Austria, uh, more interest in, uh, in the bio uh, industry, in bio business. So we are waiting for the next one, two years to, to increase the, this uh, also in Romania. Thank you very much for your time and Thank you very much. Like you say, we have the professional with Biomania, with not alone. Okay, now it's uh, my turn. What it means, BioDanube? BioDanube is an uh, uh, initiative of Biomania, and uh, we promote this initiative uh, with the Ministry of Economy, Romanian Ministry of uh, Economy of, or, and uh, Commerce, and in the um, big um, Danube strategy, it's eight axes. Uh, the axis eight is the improvement of competitivity. In, in this axis, we propose to Brussels uh, this bio <coughs> Danube, and by the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs of Romania, it's registered it like project in the future uh, Danube strategy. And this project is managed by the Ministry of Economy from the land Baden-Württemberg from Germany. And uh, our vision in this project is 
you see Danube start from Germany and the end is in Delta of Danube in uh, Romania, Ukraine and uh, small Moldavia. This is the end. It's 2,500 uh, kilometers and 1,100 kilometers is uh, in Romania border, uh, Danube. And we can uh, divide in two big uh, categories the, the country uh, point of view organic agriculture is uh, Germany and uh, Austria is the high level in, uh, in organic, high level of knowledge, production, consumption of organic food. And East uh, country of uh, Danube, Hungary, Serbia, Croatia, ex Yugoslavia, uh, Bulgaria, Romania, Ukraine, Moldavia, all this country is in beginning, have a big potential in uh, organic agriculture. And uh, we need the expertise, the technology, the competence of the country with experience, like Germany, Austria, but also France, the pioneer in organic in the, the Europe. We need this competence, this knowledge to improve the, um, not make the, the huge organic farming, uh, improve the, the competitivity of the small, the family farming of East Europe. And this farming uh, will be the, um, the small producer and all this developing must be um, uh, happened in the clusters. The clusters is very modern uh, tools for um, develop local uh, area and uh, we, we have the competence with the German and the Swiss uh, from Romania for developing the, the clusters and we want to developing the clusters for organic small farmer for vegetables, for um, uh, breeding animals, uh, milk, uh, um, and in inside of one cluster we be a platform for uh, storage, for take the products in the, the, the storage, checking for the quality of uh, food uh, quality and packaging uh, everything for local supplier for the, um, um, the, the food, organic food for the local, but also uh, regional and, if it's possible, international. And we, we hope this um, uh, Bio Danube can be a model. For this, we create uh, on this brochure is a proposal in the middle, the logo. And this logo must be promoting like a, a regional brand, organic regional brand. And with this logo, we can improve very fast, very strong the organic agriculture in uh, Danube, uh, Danube region. And in the end of this brochure, it's uh, mentioned uh, Bio Danube Goethe project. Why Goethe project? Because 200 years ago, Goethe, the big Goethe, all the people, must uh, part of the people know Goethe like a great poet, uh, philosopher, yes. But Goethe was uh, a botanist, zoologist. We can call it now a strong ecologist. But in the time of Goethe, ecology don't exist like, uh, like discipline. And uh, Goethe, 200 years ago, say, if the um, developing of the world don't, uh, uh, don't respect the rules, biological rules for his development, and the development with base of the money, of the economy, the development is based only on the profit, the, the humanity arrive a big hospital. And unfortunately, this uh, prophecy is fulfilled where? Not in Africa, but in the, the country, part of the, the, <coughs> the earth, where the agriculture 
it's very industrialized. North America, West Europe, uh, and uh, now South coming America, uh, South America. South America, yes. In this part of the the, the country, uh, the the population arrive uh, sick, very sick. If we look only obesity in West Europe and the United States, it's more than 50 percent. It's a big hospital, allergy, cancer, the chronic disease of the nutrition is the first uh, in the, the top of uh, humanity healthy and in the same time the healthy of the nature. And uh, before the, the crisis, the people speak about uh, uh, durable development, but now all the high economists of the world is, uh, agree the um, uh, economic development can be never like uh, before the crisis. The new uh, way to uh, economic development must take uh, point of the nature. And for this reason, I call it uh, Goethe project because Goethe have a very good vision, but the economy don't uh, take this vision. Uh, we want to make more and more and more, and the consequence is uh, we, we see uh, everybody. This is the, the let's say, the, the, the vision. Uh, this project, when the Danube strategy will be approved, uh, will be managed by the Ministry of uh, Baden-Württemberg, uh, and uh, I hope so, all the Ministry of Agriculture and Ministry of Economy for the Danube countries will be part in this project and for this the IFOAM uh, world, IFOAM EU must uh, put the, the, the steps for fulfill this vision because it's a lot of money for the new strategy and we must take a big part of this money for uh, sustainable rural development by uh, this brand BioDanube and um, we hope so uh, we can Im uh, sincerely I see this project like a shortcut for the East Europe country for arrive top in the organic by the expertise for the West, uh, the pioneer of the organic in Europe, France, Germany, uh, Swiss, uh, uh, England also. We need this expertise in East Europe for arrive uh, very quickly in the uh, top in the organic but also is a very uh, health development for the the rural uh, environment, the small uh, f family farmers for a better like uh, Andre explained very well is big similitude in between the, the Africa and also now in Romania, Bulgaria, Moldavia, we have the power family. Our family from the, the village uh, going, the, the young going in Spain, uh, Italy for working in agriculture in Spain and we have the most fertile land, we have a big potential but we don't um, uh, give the opportunity for the uh, young farmer to stay in Romania and work our very good land and organic agriculture is one of the best uh, opportunity. This is uh, my vision and our vision. I launch uh, uh, a challenge for uh, fulfill this vision and uh, I want to thank you very much for the, the speaker, for the ministry and uh, our partner, for you and uh, a small uh, recompense for your time is uh, tasting together uh, Romanian organic flavors here in the hall. But before that, we have uh, here uh, a question for the, the brochure. Uh, who will be awarded with the Bio World Trophy in 2014? Uh, Bio World Trophy is launched last year when Romania was country of the year. 
the first one was for the, um, Miss uh, Catherine Di Matteo, the former uh, president of IFAM, the mayor of Nuremberg, Mr. Woodley Meyer, because he's a strong supporter of organic by Biofac. He's very careful with uh, Biofac each year. And also, uh, Ms. Daciana Serb was the third uh, um, award. And now, uh, a surprise for uh, this year, we have here a diploma is Mr. Andre Leu, President of IFOM. This is just the diploma, it's for your office, but here we have um, also cultural tradition. You know, I hope so, you know, Konstantin Brukus is the biggest modern uh, artist, and his model here is in um, the, call it Gate of Keys. He's uh, very famous in uh, Romania city, Tergujiu, and I want to explain what this means. Uh, you see, it's two uh, uh, semi-circle, two. One is the farmers, and the other is the land. And together, make the harvest. And this uh, is uh, ceramic, made by a young artist in Romania, and inside is the best honey of the world. Oh. Romanian uh, organic acacia, and is for your grand and grandchildren. Thank you so much. Welcome. If you want to say some words now, like... Uh, I'll just say a couple, because I've already said a lot, but I, I just firstly want to really thank you for this. The other thing I was thinking, it's very appropriate that we've that you've launched BO you know, Danube at the start of the Danube here. This is the crossroads where the Rhine meets the Danube, so... I think it's very appropriate that this is the beginning of a great future that, and I look forward as a partnership for many years to come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for everybody and we invite you to just taste some uh, organic, uh, traditional organic food made by Romanian uh, organic food artisans. We have a lot in Romania. Thank you.